If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 29 minutes, Adam, Justin, and myself. We have a great conversation. Have some fun introductory conversation. Yeah. Uh, we talk about the great David Lee Roth. Oh. Yeah. And his- skibba doo bop uh, Yes. What do they call it? Scat? Yeah, it's scatting. It also means poop. Yeah. Uh, we talk about Prince. Yes, that's the musician. Is that what scat, scat means? Poop also? It also means poop. Yeah, I didn't like, know like that. Like bear yeah. scat? What's yeah. You never heard of that? And then skeet? No, well, oh, skeet's something else. That's something different. <laughs> that's something, well, yeah. Skeet, 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 skeet. <laughs> <laughs> then we talk about uh, how I get in the carpool lane and how today- Got busted. Karma slapped me in the oh, face. Man. Right? But it might have been worth it. That's like yeah. 50 cents. We talk about uh, adds up. the president's uh, faux pas- uh, at his meeting with the Native Americans. He's so sensitive. Oh, I thought Doug wrote Fox Paws up there. No, I was no, faux pas. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are we talking about Fox, Fox Paws? Paws? I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> then we make the connection between decorating for Christmas and fitness. Yeah. It'll blow your mind. Yeah, there's I a lot of you. parallels there. Uh, finally, <laughs> yeah. we are- Sal some, drew some parallels there. <laughs> we've extended our sponsorship with Four Sigmatic- uh, and we talk about getting sh- shroomed out over We're here. We're getting back on those mushrooms. We talk about chaga, the mu- the mother of all mushrooms. Uh, it's actually we talk about the value of fungi in the diet. Now, if you go to foursigmatic.com forward slash mind pump and you enter the code mind pump no space, you'll get a discount. We also mention Thrive Market oh, in this the, episode. My pancakes. He, yeah. Adam finished his uh, Birch Benders pancakes mix that Doug bought him last week. Uh, delicious. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, this is what you're going to get. One month free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more and free shipping. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, this is a student who's very busy and is asking us how he can finally get himself committed to going to the gym. So we have some uh, motivating conversation in that part of this episode. The next question was- You don't need motivation. You just ruined it. Thanks, Justin. (laughs) Uh, The next question was, what are are our opinions on the Squat Everyday program? It sounds like bullshit, but it's actually a real workout, and you're going to be surprised at our opinion. Right. It's not what you think. Nope. Next question was, how do you get a weaker muscle group or a weaker muscle to progress so that it matches the other side? For example, if my left bicep is small- and my right bicep is big, mm. uh, how do I get my left bicep bigger um, besides stop going on the Why internet late one at night? hang lower than the other? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? The final question was, does building muscle inherently cause extra tightness? So there's a whole myth of you know, the muscle-bound myth where if you lift weights, uh, it actually makes you tighter and yeah, you lose short, flexibility. Like the shortening of a muscle. Can't yeah. wipe your own ass. Is that true? Uh, m- maybe there is. Maybe there is some truth to it. Find out in this episode. Also, it's December when you're listening to this. Uh, no, it's no, not. No, it's not. Is it the end of November? <laughs> no, this is today, bro. Are we, are we dropping this? It's going this is, out, this babe. Is today's, dude. Man, yeah. we're fast. Yeah. It's almost December. <laughs> it's almost December, which well. means it's one month until the New Year's resolution. It's one month until everybody decides they want to work out. Everybody decides they want to get in shape. You know you did this last year. You yeah. know you did it the year before. Let's get ahead of it. Let's do this the right way. We offer something called the MAPS Super Bundle, which includes all of our most popular MAPS programs. It's one year's worth of exercise programming. In other words, you could get started and have 2018 planned out. All your workouts, every week, all the phases, all the goals, all the adaptations, exercise video demos, Blueprints, it's all in there for that entire year. Nobody offers anything like this except for Mind Pump. It's the MAPS Super Bundle. For more information, go to mindpumpmedia.com. And it's t-shirt time. T-shirt time. How many reviews? 22 reviews. Hey. Not bad. Not bad. We don't even ask for them anymore. That's mm. right. That's pretty good. Actually, that's a good point. Huh? We don't even ask for them and we still get 20. That's yep. really good. That's not bad. Nice. So we're, we're going nice to give out people. six shirts. Whoa. Hooking Again, just like last week. Hooking up. Six shirts. So the six winners are six Knicks shirts. fan, Sweet. 75. Ooh, tough to be a Knicks fan right now. Mm. Sarah and it Caleb. Is. S. Solstice. R3K1. Colin BGT23. R3K1. <laughs> <laughs> and K. Deemer. 
All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and I'll get that right out to you. Thank you. Skibidi beep, bobbidi boop, skibidi boppidi boopidi tow. Whatever happened to ska? Isn't that called ska music? Yeah, Scatting. Scat, scat, scat also means shit. It does also Doesn't mean shit. Doesn't scat also mean poop? You know who did that really well? David Lee Roth. Skibidi boop, bobbidi Oh, yeah. Bow, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just a gigolo. I'm just a gigolo. Everywhere, Everywhere I, go. I go. I don't even know what that's from. You don't remember that? I don't. What you don't that remember from? David Lee Roth uh, doing, uh, who is he? Was he with, was that Van Halen? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember Just a Gigolo? Yeah. He did that. He did that. Remember his music videos? I'm grass cream man. Watch me as I'm passing by. Yeah. yeah you, don't yeah. <laughs> you don't remember his. His music videos on MTV, and he'd fucking jump and do the splits. Oh yeah, Every, just gotta ju- jump, 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 jump. You know? yeah. and it would always have yeah. the hottest girls in his videos. I don't remember. He did a lot of scatting though. It was pff, it was point. pure hot yeah. when I was a kid. I was watching that. I was like, oh, here we go. Yeah, hot <laughs> chicks gonna come on the TV. Boom, because he's on there. He, he does. He did it right. Then he lost his mind. Yeah, did he? He's still awesome. He's weird. No, oh, I love that guy. Got to be a little. I mean, that's what happens when you just like taekwondo kicks everywhere. Remember that? Yeah. You might as well jump, jump, and he jump. fucking does the splits, and he Go fucking ahead plays and the guitar. Jump. I don't, you guys. I that was him, yeah. dude. Yeah, I'm struggling to see it right now. You don't I know thought, Van Halen? Uh, yeah, no, I hope Van Halen is, but I don't remember any of those. How I can don't, you not know Van Halen, dude? Well, I do know Van Halen, but I don't remember, you remember those songs. Yeah, I don't remember the videos. All you were right. talking about the videos, right? All right, <laughs> hit play, Doug. I want to see Just the Gigolo by David Lee Roth. So, see? Oh, oh right away. God. Right away, Ooh. hot chicks. You see that? Right away. Amazing. As a... Uh, He's like, whoa, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. As a 13-year-old boy, this was exciting. I don't remember this. Oh, oh it's a great... Man. Really? Yeah. It's too bad. That it's is a, one of my favorites. It's weird that I don't remember. Like, I remember a White Snake, and I remember... Remember the... Uh, you remember this? Dave TV? Oh, you remember White Snake? What's oh. her name? Kim Katrina? Uh, yes. What's her name? Yes. Yeah. Dancing on top of the car and stuff. Yeah, She's that was like, pretty hot. Yes. Yeah, right. Like, I re- like so this is the same era. I mean, it's the same time. I just don't remember... Yeah, I, but David Lee Roth... Like he was the he was the winner of it. Yeah, he first place he, when it he comes got to all his of it. first place. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to like hot girls in your music videos, he's he the was guy. your go to guy. He's the guy. Second place, Prince. Do you guys remember Prince's videos? Yeah. Remember uh, Cream? Well, he just he's just this like overly sexual guy. Who? Prince. Prince. He was just very androgynous, uh, like, like just like humping his guitar like every two <laughs> seconds. You know what I mean? And you, but you don't know if he's into guys or girls. Yeah, you didn't know. You yeah, had no it idea. Was like. Uh, like weird. Did anybody ever figure that out? It was both, wasn't it? I think he mainly girls. I thought. I thought it was girls too because he had that one. He always had hot girls in his videos. That was just when, like his thing. He well, according like, oh. to that, who just get interviewed with Joe Rogan? You were listening to. I you were listening Billy to it. And Morgan? Was, no, the guy that who's who claims that thirty five percent of men have oh. had a sexual experience with other men. And, oh, I don't remember what that was. That. Yeah, that was crazy. That is not a statistic. I think, well, okay. That's a crazy stat. Or that's way, I, that's I way get, inflated. Yeah, I think it's super inflated. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> okay, the first of all, you have to think, how are they, what are they categorizing as a sexual experience? Second of like all- Like me rubbing your leg earlier today? Like yeah, that's, like that's that, not a, that, that could have been. Yeah. It could have been that in some circles. Well, well then, yeah. okay. Uh, it, it also, think about like, you know, boys and girls that hang out with the same sex for a long time mm. as they're going through puberty, as they're doing the- So I'm sure, you know, I don't think that's a- I don't know where that statistic came from, but probably more than you think, innocently, you know what I mean? Mm. Kind of innocently. Really? I mean, I- Maybe. D- d- you, I had quite a few friends growing up and- I I only maybe could count on one you guys hand. Didn't, you guys didn't like uh, yeah. how many know. how many that that's happened to really yeah you can count on one hand yeah <laughs> how many huh less <laughs> <laughs> less than five that's what that means wow four yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's thirty five percent if you do the math no it's not I have a I'm lot just I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> that's at least that's a good that's a good chunk yeah, yeah. at I least think. Yeah. yeah whatever no, whatever I'm, slice of the pie dude so I was on my way to work this morning. To I was gonna write a blog because I was all motivated and shit, and uh, finally Is it gonna be controversial or are you gonna no, be no, no. safe? No, 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 uh, a lot of safe blogs. I don't know. A lot of safe blogs. Oh, going you on. mean my blog? Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. it gonna be controversial? Nets. I don't know. Adam wants me to write one that's kind of controversial. We I don't do. know if I can we say it do. here on the on the yeah. podcast. It's okay, we all do. But uh, uh, he wants me to write one that's controversial. I might do it. I have to feel inspired mm. by it. I th- maybe I'm just being a um, 
what's the word? Puss. Prima, prima yeah, donna. yeah, yeah. Like a yeah. prima. Maybe I'm just yeah. like I need to be inspired before I can write anything. Like, oh, that might, I have a process. Right. I yeah, feel that like, might be bullshit. I feel I like if you process. just start writing, I think you just start writing and it'll come. to I you. I think you're right. right. But anyway, I'm on my way here early, and I'm like, fuck traffic because San Jose has become. <sighs> It's a micro LA. Shit. It's become traffic shit. It is bad lately. Mainly because uh, we have a lot of people moving in here and the roads are controlled by centralized, uh, you know, system of government that decides that, oh, we're going to fucking make the roads look like, you know, like this and they don't fit the amount of people. And so we're all fucked. So anyway, I'm driving here, bumper to bumper traffic. Typically what I do when this happens, I'm just going to be honest, I'm not going to lie. Is I go in the carpool lane. That's what I do. <laughs> just I love that, how you just freely admit this. It's just like, something I do. Everybody. I get in the carpool lane and yeah. it's just. It's, do you at least have a dummy or you're something? Turning, you blow up? You're turning into quite the rebellious one. I know, so, right? You know? He's so like anti system. You know Using you know what it deodorant is? in grocery stores, so, driving no the way. carpool lane. Yeah. Fuck the man. You, you know what it is? <laughs> I'm driving in the diamond it's lane. It's not like a dangerous thing. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm, I'm on my cell phone in my car or I'm drinking and driving or like I hurt someone. I'm in the carpool lane. Big deal, right? So. <laughs> I'm in the carpool lane because I'm like, I want to get there on time so I could do some work. So it's because I'm People trying. People get angry, dude. I'm trying to be productive. And uh, as I'm going. Do you buckle your passenger seat just all, to make All it look the like rule a, followers are like, no. ah! I've actually had people I'm see me. You. I've actually had people in the slow, you know, in the traffic lane see me in the carpool lane, yeah. drive by, and then they'll flip me off. Oh my be, God. And what? I'm like, look, I'm taking the risk. Let's talk if about this. If you want to get in this lane, get in the lane. I got in a fight recently with my wife because I parked in the burrito loading zone. At Chipotle. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Burrito loading zone? Wait, I'm fucking parking here. You can. And I'm and I'm gonna Le- sit here and I'm gonna eat my burrito and I'm not gonna like be quick about it. Legally yeah. you can do that. You can even park in yeah. the for electrical like, vehicles. They just only, made that so shit up. They can't yeah. yeah. Exactly. And they did the same <laughs> thing. The, yeah, yeah. 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 You, El- electric. Green friendly yeah. car. Fuck you. It's electric. What did I say? Yeah. Electrical. <laughs> <laughs> so actually you did do that once. Uh, we parked in the electric vehicle thing <laughs> and he took the he took the electric the whatever it's called the tube or the yeah, thing that you're supposed he to plug the in cord and he and put he it just, like in his his window his window he just stuck in his window uh, so there we uh, go uh, yeah. that's kind of it looks thing. like it's charging so anyway some I, tesla owner comes I, up I'm hella in, pissed yeah dude. Uh, fuck you tesla uh, owner so i'm driving and i'm in the carpool lane and I'm just that's what i do right yeah. and i look over the right motorcycle cop and he's looking back, oh, you dumb. know, obviously scoping out the, the carpool. But he's all the way on the right. So he's across three lanes of traffic. Uh-huh. So I'm like, fuck. So I'm like, okay, uh, maybe he didn't see me. But I'm going to do what most smart people would do and get over right. real quick. In now case you got to go comes. hide. Yeah, so yeah. I, I came Quickly. over. But as I'm changing lanes, he was coming down the middle. So he sees me. <laughs> So I'm like, well, now I just admitted what I was doing, right? <laughs> so I tried to think of like a smart, like, what am I going to say to this guy to get out of this this ticket? Like you're okay. pregnant or something? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I got to take a shit. You know, I'm yeah. trying to go oh fast. I, take, I don't want to poop myself. I heard yeah. that that's actually the number one thing to get out of one. So, well, to say that you have like like diarrhea or you have like really bad stomach issues right now and you got to go to the bathroom. You know what? I'm using that. So there's a, there's a part of me that was like, I'm going to s- make up some shit. And then there's a part of me that's like... Fuck it, just keep it real. You know, yeah, I'm just going to keep it real because- You know what? I tried to get away with it and fuck, yeah, I I got see caught, it. dude. <laughs> yeah. I got caught, you know? Yeah. And here's the thing. If I do the- Because what, what's a carpool ticket? It's like 270 bucks, I think. Yeah. It's, it's stupid, right? Yeah, it's a lot. But if I do the math for all the times I've taken the carpool and not gotten a ticket- Yeah, it's like $5 a pass. Not even. It's like 50 cents. I yeah. did the math. It's like, it's been at least 10,000 times. So <laughs> it's pretty much free. So- oh. That's I, actually not a bad way to look at it. That's not strategy. a bad way to look at it. It's like, listen, I just always drive in the carpool lane. I get caught once every fifty times. Yeah. It's basically I pay a dollar to use a carpool lane. Yeah. And if yeah. I, if someone asks it's me, it's like a tax. Why yeah. wouldn't we have? Yeah, why wouldn't we have that? That would be smarter. That because way. that's too smart. Adam. That's too smart. Yeah, it's too smart to do something like that. So they need to come up with stupid things. Yeah, people get angry. And uh, that's why our roads are fucking like if there was a lane that I, if that I could pay like five extra dollars. Of course, you know, there's like two, there's a dollar lane and then there's a five dollar lane. Right. You, you know what that's called? What? That's called a, that would be a market solution. It would yeah. be. They would never allow that with roads. No. Never would allow. It would that be so that. smart though. It would be because and people, then there's an underground road because people like, like ourselves would go like you know bucks. what like I gotta be somewhere and sometimes I would sit in traffic maybe sometimes I don't care maybe sometimes i'm not in a hurry or like that but if there's a time of hurry i'm uh, willing to pay five dollars so to so make now sure now we'll get that controversial I'm- so because uh, a lot of times when i talk about like markets and how awesome and effective they are and efficient they are people will be like well, what about the roads we need people to you know we need to pay taxes to build the roads and i would say well actually 
I bet you if roads were privatized, I bet you they'd be way more efficient. Yeah, like people you get, can't get on the road unless you pay. Well, what country get, is that? There's people like, people get really that. pissed off. I don't know, but people get really mad when I say that because they're like, that's crazy. How could? And I'm like, well, it sounds crazy because you've never lived in a situation like that, so it sounds so different. I said, but it would be awesome. And they're like, I would hate to have to pay every time I use the road. And I'm like, we already pay for the roads. And like, well, it would be more expensive. And I said, buy a pass. Well, here's what I say to people. We don't, cal- we calculate the cost of the taxes to pay for the roads, but we don't calculate the cost of lost time at work, yeah. lost productivity, stress. Like it's one of those stressful things in the world to get stuck in traffic, you know, accidents that it causes. Because you know, private companies would do a better job because they're crap. The freeways look the same that and they, they said they looked twenty years with ago. Another road. Yeah. yeah. Well, It'd I thought there, I thought there's some states that actually have the the roads private. Is that not true? I don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought so. And you pay tolls and stuff like that to go through them. I know there's another country. Some I know some some smart forum member will make sure they clear this up yeah. for me. That I know that there's places like that, and the roads are like immaculate. They're like mm-hmm. beautiful, and you pay. You know, you cross. I think New Jersey isn't New Jersey like that. I have no idea. Really? Yeah, yeah I believe. I no you, I, does Doug? Do you know? Do you have any idea about that? I don't know. I'm just maybe fucked. the government's charging them. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. No. But anyway. I'm making shit up. So I had to pay my hey. fucking stupid, I have a stupid ticket now. Oh, so you know. did get caught. Yeah, I don't know. He pulled me over. Oh, so yeah. what did you say? And then Nothing. I didn't lie. I just, he just, he didn't even give me a chance. Yeah, you know, license registration. So I'm like, here you go. And you know what the funny thing is? After I got it and he's like, okay, you know, please, uh, you know, safely merge into traffic. I said, no problem. Got on my cell phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? texting yeah, me, there's man. a piece of me that's kind of like. Oh man, there's a piece of me that's kind of like. You're such a rebel, dude. Fuck you, man. You know the irony. I'm still you know how many times I've seen a cop go by me and he's on his phone. Oh uh, yeah, every time. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. dude, all the time. Just they're just as they're just as human as the rest of us. Oh, he of wants course. to take his face, his Facebook he and wants Instagram to know what his too. Girlfriend's doing right <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, dude. He's, you know, just because he's a cop, yeah. just because he's a cop doesn't mean he doesn't check his Instagram. Yeah. Oh, Come on, man. Nobody's impervious. Come on, dude. Anyway, did yeah. you guys see, uh, <laughs> what did you guys think of Donald Trump, what he did at the- uh, Oh, shit. The, you just showed me that. Bro, Dude, how much oh backlash is that? Right now? <coughs> what, what, what's he getting for? He it? has to be- He just pissed everybody off. He has to give the least amount of fucks of anybody I've ever, that's ever been in yeah. public office. Do you, okay, do you sometimes It's think, impressive on that level. Sometimes I think this because you- Because it's terrible. What I he know, did there, was such that, bad right, no, was politics. Bad, dude. And such so so what he did for the listeners who don't know is he's at this uh, ceremony where he's giving awards and medals to the Native Americans that served in World War II who were using their their Native American languages to communicate. There was actually a movie on this. I forgot the name of it. Wind Talkers was it? Wind, yeah. So he's giving out these awards, and as he's giving them the awards and talking to them and saying, "You guys did a great thing." He's saying, but you know, but we have someone in Congress, you know, like you guys, and uh, you know, uh, she's been there for a while. We call her Pocahontas. He's talking about Elizabeth oh Warren, God. who he refers to as Pocahontas because she put down on a college admission that she was a minority because she had Native American, which turned out she has like one sixtieth of her, or something like that, as Native American. And people are saying, oh, she tried to get an advantage. That's a whole other story. So he's always fucking with her, right? Because she's like super anti-Trump. <laughs> dude. But dude, he's talking to Native he's talking to Native Americans and he's saying that. Like that is so Yeah. Horrible, dude. Yeah, well, I think he, I can't help. I think laugh. his intention was to make that jab, but he didn't really think about his audience who he's speaking to. Like he never does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I he think just, he's, he's lives in his own ideas. Like he just lets it out, bro. It's so bad, most, dude. Most of the time, I feel like I can defend him and say, "Listen, I think that that he's no. I think he just. I think he. A lot of times, I think it's a smart strategy. Like a lot of times, people think that he's just a pure idiot and he just says stupid stuff. And I'm like, sometimes I think he's smart and he's doing that intentionally because he knows it's going to go viral and people are going to send. He's the first president to really maximize and utilize social media more than anybody. To, yeah, more yeah. than anybody before him. Right. So what makes us think that when we're sharing something that oh my god Trump did this yeah. on social media and millions of people are looking at it yeah. that that wasn't a master plan? Uh, well, I don't know, but this this is, yeah this one was a little. You know what it makes <laughs> like me. It. Most of the time, I feel like I can defend that. This one, I don't know about. You know what it is? I <laughs> can do it without being <laughs> shitty. No, I think what it is is he's been a man in power for so long that he's used to just saying what the fuck he wants. Like he doesn't. You know what I mean? He never. Yeah. Nobody ever checks him because <clears throat> he's the guy. Like, what yeah. are you going to say to him? Like, he's the man. So I feel like now that he's president, he doesn't realize that he's just whatever. I'm going to just yeah. talk the way I normally do. And so he's saying he's seventy years old. <laughs> he's saying there's a Pocahontas. Yeah, is he we have a Pocahontas. yeah. yeah. Well, that's why. 
You know, he, he says shit because he's just he's seventy years old. Bro, you know, you're not gonna change. My him. girl thinks he's uh he's mildly autistic. She's like, I think he's probably <laughs> a little bit on the spectrum. Yeah, I think serious. There's something to like that. he's very smart in some ways. In other ways, you're like, dude, where's your social intelligence? What are you really? doing? But man, when I saw that, so one of my friends who's like a hardcore uh, Democrat, right? Good oh, friend God, of mine. Just love to jump all over. Well, that just one. sends it because we always make fun of you know we always poke at. I'm not, I'm not a I'm not a Republican, but I can definitely side with one or the other sometimes right so he'll send me this stuff and i watch in this video and i'm just i just start busting up i'm like did he really just he do can't, that can't what is he it. doing dude i can't believe it. what are you doing i can't uh, believe the president i can't just did defend that. that there's nothing i could say there's about nothing it. there's Fuck, nothing i could say about dude. that <laughs> you imagine that yeah oh it's like you're talking to a bunch of like italians or something like yeah you know i got a friend uh mario and luigi he's back at home <laughs> He's a plumber. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be like, what the fuck this motherfucker yeah, just like say? This right. guy. Is he trying to be racist right now? Yeah. Anyway, what did you uh, what did you guys do over the weekend? Because I feel like uh, we don't really talk about- Well, I got my Christmas tree. I got all my uh, Christmas uh, shopping done and decorated the house, dude. Boom. Wow. Yeah, wow. We, you're on fire. We were. Where do you get your tree? Uh, Morgan Hill. This year, we didn't cut it down. This year, we picked it out. Mm. Yeah, we got it. It's flocked. Mm-hmm. Like, I, you, like, I like a white tree. Did, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. What, what do they do? Spray it with the white? It likes pretend smell. chemicals. Yeah, pro, pretty much. Probably. Yeah, it's Just a bunch I, of cancer. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I got a cancer. Here's tree. some asbestos <laughs> served to you. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Xenoestrogens. <laughs> did, did, tiny uh, Tim. Oh you, no, <laughs> that's why he's tiny. Yeah. Did you did you cut yours down yet? Justin? Yeah, I did. I, I did day after Thanksgiving. Now, do so. you actually go in the forest next to your house and just find one? No, no, uh, I don't do cut that. your neighbor's tree down. <laughs> Too big a tree, bro. No, I went to a, a ranch or a, a, yeah, a Christmas tree ranch. It was up um, Black some, Mountain or whatever up there. Yeah, Four Winds, I guess it's called. But uh, we went up there and and I found it right away. And I was just like, dude, I, when I I don't know, man, I. The family's all into the whole experience of it, you know, and like having coffee and we normally do all that this kind of stuff, and it's chill and cool. But I don't know, for some reason, I was on a hustle, man. I was just like, cut it down, and I was done. Just get it. I'm like, I'm out of here. So I had a very interesting experience uh, with the Christmas tree because this is the first time I've cut one down. So I actually before I've never cut down a tree. I've always either bought it at Home Depot pre-cut, did, did you like, or uh, I, I'll buy a fake one. Yeah. So this Did time, the tree cry. This time, huh? Yeah. I apologize yeah, to it. You first. hug it first. Uh, thank yeah. you for donating. It's your the first time I've ever carcass done to be decorated. Like this. My, no, I don't care. Um, but uh, so I, I, th- I had an interesting experience because so my girlfriend, right? She just got super into holidays. Loves the holidays. I mean, we play. She's playing Christmas music at the house. Yeah. You know, Christmas. You know, decorations everywhere. Fall decorations. You know, I'm, you know, just the whole thing. So she loves it. So she's like, we, let's go cut down a tree. It's super fun. Now, I've never really enjoyed that whole process because to me, and it's funny because I didn't realize this until recently. To me, I always thought of the whole process is, is to get to the end, which is just to have a tree in your house. Like, here's our Christmas tree. We're supposed to have it up with, with you know, ornaments on it and it's done. And I always thought like, God, the process takes too long. Like, who cares? Just put the tree up, have some ornaments on. Now we're decorated. Mm-hmm. And she's like, she's like, no, dummy. She's like, it has nothing to do with having a tree in your house. The, the it's the process. It's nothing to do with having a tree, or nothing to do with. It's that day that we spend doing all the stuff, and it's just, yep. it's just, it's that whole process. And it was like a light bulb in the Irish coffee. It was, it was like a light bulb that went off in my head, and I thought, holy shit! The reason why I've never enjoyed this. Is because I've always thought of the end result. I've always thought the goal is just to have the tree up with the ornaments, but in reality, that's nothing. It's all about enjoying cutting it, you know, driving up, listening to music with the kids, hot cocoa, cutting the tree down, bringing it home, getting out the decorations, listening to music, you know, playing games. And I really enjoyed it. And then I thought to myself, wow, this really, this is so similar to uh, fitness. It's so similar to how when people have a goal, like I want to lose 30 pounds, that's why I'm working out, or I need to get ready for this, that's why I'm working out. That's why they hate the process. That's why they hate working out so much. That's why it sucks for them because- So focus on the end. It's yeah. all about the goal, and for them, they just want the goal. They don't give a fuck about- When they're not being present in the process. That's it. Yeah. And it's like, holy shit, it's the same yeah. thing. If you learn to enjoy what you're doing with the process, you'll never have to, you really won't ever have to worry about falling off or on the wagon- because you just enjoy the process. And I think about myself and you guys, like we're super consistent, relatively consistent with exercise and stuff. 
but we don't do it necessarily because there's a goal. We just like doing it, right? It's right. all yeah, about the process. It's fun. It was a mind. It was like a, a huge paradigm shift right away. I was like, "Holy shit! I well, get you, it now." You also again yeah. start connecting the things, like because what you do when you do those. I mean, this Katrina and I, we decorate the house together. We do the tree. That's part of. Uh, it's just a good time for us. It's it detaches us from work, everything else, you know. And we're we're focused on a a very easy task to do that in, that we enjoy each other's company and we're talking and it's bonding and so. When you start to connect the dots with that is what it's all about while you do that. Like, and I love that you use, you found a way to tie this into fitness. <laughs> no, <laughs> this, well, you know, because you're right. I mean, yeah. you, you are right. I mean, that's the same thing that if people could just learn to, instead of focusing so much on the goal, pay attention to the other things like how are you sleeping and how are your energy levels and how productive is your day because you're working out and you're doing all these things. And, right? and also it's time for yourself. And the reason why I bring it back to fitness is because and I've been doing this lately t- uh, to get myself to understand other aspects of life better because I have such a good... If there's anything that I have a really good grasp of, a healthy understanding of, it's uh, fitness and nutrition, right? If, if all the things that I, because it's, it's been my profession, my passion for a long time, it's what I coach people on. So I understand it on a different level than, than the average person in the sense that, like, I understand what it means to be consistent. I understand enjoying the process. I understand loving your body, like all the stuff we talk about on the show. I get it. But what I'm doing now is I'm taking that understanding and I'm just applying it because it all translates. It's the same formula for everything else. Like, you want to be a, a millionaire? Enjoy the process. You want to, you know, uh, anything you do, enjoy the process, well, that's and that's an, what makes it... That's an interesting discussion because there is there is a lot of really um, popular entrepreneurs that make a living off of... Speeding that up. Uh, yeah, on selling mm-hmm. the grind. Yeah. On selling the grind and the... You know, oh, you know, this whole enjoying the process and thinking like that wow. and balance and everything like that is not true. And that where it's really at is, well, you know what that reminds me of? It mm. reminds me of the same people in fitness that do the same thing. So there's people in the in the entrepreneur world that promote like you know being successful and what it takes to do that. The sacrifice, By anything's the, necessary. It's very similar yeah. to the Burn fitness, all your friendships, the fitness side of people that show that you have to become this martyr in order to look a certain way. And it's really neither one of them are actually true. No, and and the 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 way I challenge that is the people that are successful and that put out that message of the grind. They actually enjoy the grind, so they are enjoying the process. Yeah. It's not for right, them, right? Because right. I've known a lot. They of, identify with that, bro. I've known a lot of grinders. I've been one before. Right, right. If yeah. you ask me while I'm grinding, I'm gonna tell you I love it because I did. It wasn't like I was doing it and hating it. Like, oh, this fucking sucks. I gotta. Do it was always like, yes, I'm gonna. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna work bell to bell. I'm gonna push myself harder. <laughs> so it was enjoying the process. Now, of course, there's a different conversation in terms of balance. <clears throat> you know, balancing your life out. But at the end of the day, if you love and enjoy the moment and the process, the goal, you're going to get the goal. That's the easy part. But if all you do is focus on the goal and everything is a means to an end, holy shit, man, it becomes it's tough. It becomes a struggle. Then it's a, then it's a matter of willpower, which at some point you run out of willpower. You run out of motivation. And then what? You right, know what right, I mean? Right, right. So I just, I just connected the two of those. And um, I don't know. It's pretty cool because at that point now we're decorating the tree, and I'm like, "Whoa, I really enjoy this." Watch how differently. Be- yeah, it becomes a ritual tradition. Like we we totally and and we weren't into this at all as kids. Like on my side of the family, this is something that uh, my wife's done forever, <laughs> and like kind of I, I became a part of that process, and it totally makes a difference as to like okay. Like it starts now and it's actually helped to kind of appreciate actually when Christmas gets there even more because you're just like, you know, you've, you've prepped all the way up until then and like, you know, experienced a lot of it with the family already. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's fun, man. You guys, Um, when you're decorating, you have a drink? Are you guys drinking something? Yeah. yeah, So Irish coffee. So we're drinking uh, coffee. Um, uh, My girl will either drink coffee or having got cocoa or, and this actually brings me another thing I'm excited about. Uh, we can tell the listeners we've just re-signed with uh, Four Sigmatic. So they were sponsoring us for a little while. Then there was a little break in between and they really liked uh, how effective we were at sending people over to them. And I think it's just they have a good product, obviously, and we like their products too. So I was drinking Chaga, Mm. which, um, uh, you know, it's got an interesting taste. So I think some people either like it or they don't. But the anxiolytic effects of Chaga, it's like a super... I get such a nice, even feel 
when I drink chaga tea, it's not like reishi. Reishi is more of a stress relieving, sleepy feel. Mm-hmm. Chaga is more just the kind of a well being, and it's actually got anti anxiety effects. Um, and they call it the. I think we talked about this before. Do they you call mix it, it with anything, or do you just brew it and then straight? I just drink it straight, man. You just drink it straight. Yeah, and they call it the the mother of all herbs or mushrooms. I think because it's such a potent adaptogen. I learned a lot about chaga back in the day. Uh, because uh, when I had a family member who had cancer, towards the end of her life, I discovered uh, Chaga's anti-cancer effects. Um, and so that's when I first learned about it. And it's actually being studied by quite a few um, pharmaceutical companies for its potency and and Do you think that's part of the, the, the rise, like companies like forcing back? Because you're seeing there's way more awareness around mushrooms than yeah, there were fungi in ten, yeah, 10 yeah. years ago when we were like when we were in health fitness talking, talking it this seems nutrition. seems like a whole new <sighs> sort of uh, yeah direction that, you know, nutritionally that we're focusing on. Mushrooms um, have always been big in Chinese, in alternative medicine. So mm-hmm. Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, mushrooms were huge in them. In fact... In Chinese medicine, they'll probably prescribe. Yeah, it's uh, been around forever with them. Yeah, they'll prescribe mushrooms way before, um, or, or more often than I think almost anything else. Um, and mushrooms have just played a huge role in human civilization, from psychedelic mushrooms, which were probably the first consumed psychedelic substances, to the medicinal properties of mushrooms. But what I find fascinating about mushrooms that I learned uh, not that long ago is m- mushrooms are not a vegetable, which I knew, but I didn't really put together. And what I mean by that is we think that, you know, it's important to eat lots of vegetables every day, eat some fruit, your nuts, your meats. And we think of all these different categories and we tend to throw mushrooms in the vegetable category. Right. It's a total different category. So if we eat lots of vegetables, but not necessarily mushrooms, we think we've got it covered. Mushrooms are complete their own category. They're fungi and they have their own health benefits. And some uh, functional medicine doctors say that you should probably have mushrooms at least a few days a week because they have unique benefits uh, to the body, in particular, balancing out the immune system, which is, uh, especially nowadays with all the autoimmune issues that people mm-hmm. are having, is, prob- is, is an important thing. So, uh, But yeah, no, I'm happy that we got Four Sigmatic back on because yeah. now I can get my, my chaga free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping it real. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Douglas, bring on the bird. This quaz brought to you by Organify. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organify fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organify totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organify.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from MCD Matt. How do you finally commit to working out? Being a student, it's difficult to want to work out. I know I have the time, but it's difficult to get my ass to the gym. What are some tips to get yourself to the gym? He's got a, what do they say, anal gl- glaucoma? Just go, man. Can't see his ass in the gym. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? An- anal glaucoma. What is anal can't, glaucoma. Can't see, Can we make can't that see getting my ass in the gym. cloudy <laughs> asshole. Is that what's going on? I'm, hey, dude, my dad jokes are getting strong. <laughs> they are dude, getting, that, that one was too much. Did yeah, you see the one on you're, the, you're pushing that one to happen. Did you see the one exists. I did on Insta Story? With the, with Which the one? pancake, but I was shaking the pan, so I said yes. pan-quake. Yes. <laughs> so really, I missed that, but really bad. That, how really. dare I? Because that's that's amazing. Hey, speaking of pancakes, though, dude, I have gone through, I'm on my third bag now of the, the pancakes that you introduced me to. Birch for, Benders. Yes, with the Thrive Market. I told market. you. You know, no. They, oh, uh, snap. Well, all you have to do is add water to them, and they are bomb. You so have the protein. Ones. I have the protein. That's ones. my kind of cooking. Just add water. No, they, it, they and they're legit. They really. cook up. Perfectly, dude. Fluffy. Really? It's the best. So the only complaint, the only complaint I have is I, I, I want a bigger serving. Do you know if they have a bigger serving on the on the Thrive, Doug? Do you know? I don't. I don't think they do. I think that's the only one. Yeah, that's the only knock I have is because I'm I'm burning through them. I like them so much. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. So that's been. It's Birch. What was it? Birch what? Birch Benders, and they're they're like a full three dollars cheaper on Thrive Market. Like most of the stuff on there. Right, right. So no, cool. I, I've been I've been crushing those. Lately. So the question, you know, how is he going to get? How did you finally commit to working out? How's he going to get his butt in the gym? You know, we just I just was talking about this in the intro, uh, or earlier. This is one of the things where I think people, we've been told and fed for so long that it's all about motivation, mm-hmm. that in order to do something, you need to be motivated to do something. First and foremost- It's uh, fleeting. Yeah. You got to understand something. Motivation, when you have it, is great. 
uh, but it's temporary. It is not a permanent emotion or feeling, just like happiness, sadness, anger. It comes and it goes. And if you're waiting for motivation to go work out, at best, it's going to be inconsistent. At mm-hmm. worst, you'll never get yourself to go And I think out. a lot of this, too, comes from the old mindset of like having to actually kill it in the gym and do things that are substantially difficult and intense. And um, really, what's going to do you best is to show up and just start slow and you know really just start getting through the movements of it. And treating it as practice and coming in and, and just practicing, you know, lifting weights a little bit here and there. And, and then eventually it just snowballs. I think the, I think the biggest mistake that people make is they think they got to do more than what they really need to. Yeah. I think there is this, we're on, we talk about this all the time. We're either on or we're off and we're on, we're on, right? You're just, you're doing everything. And it actually doesn't have to be that difficult. Like if you haven't been going to the gym at all, just getting to the gym and like what Justin was just saying, practicing a few movements, that's excellent for a day one, mm-hmm. you know? And then day two, you, you a little bit more, you know? And you just, I think people try and make this like, okay, on January 1 mm-hmm. and, you know, this, I, this is my New Year's resolution and it's like they cut out all the fast food, they cut the sodas out, they cut the candy out, they yeah. start exercising, they start lifting weights. Or they start doing I cardio. lose. Right. Yeah. And, it's, and it becomes this like all or nothing type of deal and it's like, no, actually, you're not only is that not the best way to do it, but you'd be, be much better off, you'll get better results if you gradually move yourself in it and you'll also enjoy the process mm-hmm. a lot more. Mm-hmm. It's so much easier to, in fact... It's something that I, I've had to teach myself to do because, uh, if anything, I think that we, the reason why we can speak to this too is that we're all people that used to do this. I 100% would – I was either dialed or, or not. And what happens when, you, when you're like that, you, you do turn into this on or off thing versus when you actually – Go in just a little bit at a time, a little bit more. You build upon that. It's a, it's a, it's more of a, a journey and a process. And then I think it's a lot easier to enjoy, and it's also easier to fit in a crazy schedule. Mm-hmm. You start to realize, like, oh, well, I haven't gave myself twenty minutes, and this right now is close to home for me because I have, I've been the most inconsistent training right now than I have been in the last four plus years. <clears throat> And, you know, I'm back in uh, just last couple of weeks was, uh, you know, I had a really good week where I had four days in the gym, which for me uh, in the past a year ago, that would be hardly anything. Like I was training seven days a week, you know, just a year ago. So four days. But the week before that, I'd only made three days and the week before that I only made two days. And so it's just like, hey, I'm just trying to get in the habit of getting the gym. And then when I'm, when I'm in here working out, sometimes I'm only doing two exercises, maybe three exercises, mm-hmm. just getting my body reacclimated to getting in here, moving, exercising, I'm back to wearing my Fitbit, just being aware of my steps. I know that there's days where I could easily sit on my ass for 2,000 steps for the entire day. So making it, making sure that I'm pushing up to like five to 8,000 on those days. The other days when I'm moving around at work, I'm making sure I'm hitting 10,000. So giving myself very small gradual goals and just building upon that I think is the is a much smarter strategy. Here's the thing. Um, a subpar routine right. done consistently is going to give you better results than an excellent program done inconsistently. So I know we talk all the time about uh, excellent, you know, professional, well done exercise programming. Uh, our MAPS programs are, are very, very well put together, great programming. We design them ourselves. However, if you did our MAPS programs and did a little bit here and then didn't do it for three weeks and then did some, it's it's going to be less effective than a crappy program that you're there in the gym consistently. So consistency is more important than anything. Don't worry so much about all the stuff you need to do. Right. Just do a little something and think about it as it's time for yourself. Really, it's just time for yourself. That may mean you just go for a walk. Yeah, especially for your body. Yeah. I mean, like, like half, and, and even though we have everything outlined, you know, in the maths programs, like, for instance, I'll get this sometimes, like, well, I didn't complete, you know, the last three exercises or this and that. This, it still applies. You know, it's that same uh, idea that, like, you do have some structure, but you know what? Like, I was listening to my body and I was, I was fatigued and I was exhausted. Okay. So we'll pick it up again tomorrow. I always tell people, you know, do something you enjoy first. If you're just getting started working out, you don't need to worry so much about doing the right amount of resistance training and cardio and mobility work and all that stuff. If you're doing nothing, just pick something you enjoy. So if that is a walk, then make that and do that consistently. And then eventually you'll start to see yourself 
ramp things up. It's typically I, what I'm happens care, I'm naturally. careful with saying that, though, because there's some people that, uh, and I've had a lot of people that uh, their definition of getting in shape is the running thing. It's like getting, I'm either not running or I'm running. And I love to run when I'm running, like when they get into it. And so they think that like, okay, I'm back in it. Let me start running again, you know, every day. Like I, I'm dealing with that with a friend of mine right now who I help out. But that's the on the off, that's on the wagon, off the wagon people. I rarely ever see someone who loves running and just, this is what I've been doing for the last 10 years and I perfect it and it becomes my, my thing. It's usually the people who do that are the ones that are like, I'm getting in shape. I'm going to just start running. And then they do it and do it and do it. And then they stop. Uh, is usually what I see, you know, uh, you know, from from those kinds of people. I look. I had a client. She's probably listening. Good friend of mine. Um, ended up becoming one of my my favorite people to ever train. She came to me, and was sent to me by one of my doctor clients. So she was one of their patients, and she comes to me and walks in super like not happy. Like didn't want to be there. Her doctor told her to come in. Didn't want to be there. We sit down, and she literally tells me. I'm not working out more than once a week with you. So I'm only coming in once a week and I'm not changing my nutrition. Those are like the first. <laughs> Here's what I'm not going to do. Those are the first two things out of her mouth. Yeah, yeah. So I said, that's fine. So all I, I know I have to work with is once a week. Right, right. So we'll do the best that we can, the most we can within that once a week. Now, I knew that she, because then I had talked to her further and we did this whole assessment, and I knew that she had totally horrible experiences with working out. She's had injuries that she tried to rehab that never got rehab because the physical therapist never progressed her. She's worked out with trainers that overtrained her and pushed her too hard and she got real sore. And so I'm like, okay, what I'm going to do, my goal is to just get her in once a week, which she said she can do. And each time she comes in, I'm just going to have a good time with her. I'm going to get her and, and do exercises with her, but I'm going to have good conversation with her because during this assessment, I discover she's intelligent. She likes to have good conversation. So that's what we're going to do when we work out. I'm going to give her some exercises. We're going to do those. But the whole time, we're going to have great dialogue, great discussion. And every once in a while, I'm going to slip in some fitness stuff. And so this went on for a little while. And she showed up every week, once a week, consistently. I think it happened. I think it went on for like, I want to say almost a year of just once a week. Wow. Now, in that once a week, which is way more than she was doing before, mm -hmm. I got her stronger. I got her more stable. There's a lot. I did a lot with that once a week. I did the most I could do with that once a week. Next thing I know, without me saying anything, she comes to me and says, hey, Sal, do you have another day a week that's available? Absolutely. Now we're twice a week. Now she's doing it twice a week. Next thing I know later on, hey, is there anything I can do on my own at home? Next thing I know, hey, what should I do with nutrition? Do you think I should cut out sugar? What do you think about processed foods? Fast forward today... She's still working out with, uh, she's actually trains with my girlfriend now because I don't train anymore, but she's made drastic changes to her diet, her activity level, and it's all through that slow process of being consistent with what she was ready for right. and look where she's at now. Now, if I had taken that individual and sat right. in front of me and I Trying said- to throw her in that right Yeah, away. and I'm like, listen, once a week's a waste of time. You need to come see me at least three days a week. She, she probably would have never- Never I think in. as long as you're realistic with your goals and they and people understand that, right? Like I think people there's this this idea that the harder I push, the more I do right now, the faster I get to my goal. Again, focusing so much <laughs> on the goal instead of the process and they don't realize that it's really not. It's not that much faster if you really think about it. Like this if you're just slowly building upon it. Like a year is a long time to go one day a week, but I think that starting off starting off with less and building upon that versus trying to max like say, "Okay, I have four days a week that I can get to the gym and then fully committing to that mm -hmm. right away. It's like, well, okay, if you have four days, why don't you start off with one or two? You know? Do that for a while. Right, do that for a while. And, and see what happens. And then build upon that. I'd like to say this to uh, MCD Matt. So you are a student, so you're probably strapped for cash and, you, and you're saying you don't have much time. Here's what I'll do. If you're listening, DM me and I'll give you a 50% off coupon to for Maps Anywhere. Maps Anywhere, you can work out in your room, in your dorm room. You don't need to go to the gym. There's no equipment. It's super effective. I think that foundational workouts are two a week, and if you want to add more, you can. So hopefully that'll help you be more consistent. Next question is from Scotland360. Opinions on the Squat Everyday program would be an interesting one since you guys are all about frequency, etc., but against going to failure. I love this and hate this. Yeah, I know several people who've yeah. done this. I love I love it, it and I hate it. It oversimplifies everything. Right, I love it and I hate it. I think So that what do you love about it? What first? I what I love about it is it, it the people that have gone through it and they've had a lot of success, 
it helps them with the light bulb of frequency and understanding yeah, like you sure. can, you can the frequency volume frequency right so i think that's what i love about it what i don't like about it is a lot of people don't understand how to apply it correctly yeah it's not you if you're going to squat every single day you can't be back load back this isn't a numbers game of like oh, i need to ramp it up right it can't you can't be crushing it all the time some day is just you know pause squats and and comp- depth and you know tempo and you're you're focusing on mechanics really mm-hmm. slow maybe a day then you go heavy then another day you lots of re- so you if you're going to squat every single day you cannot hammer heavy and every every single day and even if you did and you make that happen like you're taxing the fuck out of your body you're only going to see minimal results from that so that's what i don't like about it is i don't know it takes a lot that is something that has taken me 16 years of training myself and training others to really understand how to apply and to, applying intensity is is tough to do and i and i still over overdo it and underdo it sometimes and still mm. refining how perfect I am on like knowing right where to push my body to maximize my results but not overtax my body. So th- what I don't like is squatting every single day is challenging for the average person who's just trying to follow a program where it's like, hey, I've never done this before. I, my friend had great results doing squat every day, so I'm going to squat every day. But like if you're not very in tune with your intensity and knowing how to pull back and put when to push and if that to me that takes a long time to learn that mm-hmm. and yeah. so it, it is kind of an advanced thing to uh, to ask people. Well, to yeah, and, and my issues with it, it's like you know if, if you're asking somebody to do something specific like that, if they feel like they don't do it, like they feel like they're off the wagon now. You know, it's it goes back to that whole like thing, day. right? Yeah, or or it's like you said, like it they think of it as like a challenge, right? So that whenever you like think of it more of a challenge, it's like they're, they're trying to, to gain some kind of PR out of this and like really like ramp up their, uh, their intensity and their process. Mm -hmm. And instead of just really focusing, you know, on the skill of it and, and just having that be something that's a regular thing that I'm, I'm, I'm honing in on this mechanically right? and and for me to hone in on this mechanically, Oh my God, it's going to do wonders for you. I'll tell you what, uh, the squat everyday program is a great way to add for the average person. Cause if you're already uh, like a power lifter or strength athlete, who's been doing this for a while, maybe not so much, but for the average person, average lifter, do the squat everyday program. It's a real fast way to add like 30 to 50 pounds to your squat. And you'll probably gain a quarter to a, a full inch on your quads. And those are what I, so far, everybody I know who's done it has seen something similar to that. I have a friend actually who did this recently and I had to coach him through it because like like what you were talking about, Adam, he was overdoing the intensity. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, no, no. I said, it's squat every day, but it's not squat hard every day. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're sore, you go in there and you do it easy. So he started doing that. And he's like, I had to stop because he stopped. He couldn't fit in his jeans because his leg, his legs grew up so, so much. So yeah, the, that is the cool thing about frequency. Here's the bad thing about the squat every day program. Great way to develop imbalances. Fantastic. If if all you're if all you're doing <laughs> you're is you're in a really hard wire that yeah, yeah exactly you are you are really cementing a recruitment pattern for squatting which is a very functional recruitment pattern but because you're squatting every day you're pro- probably not doing a lot of other things right and you can develop issues I know if I squat too often and don't do other things I start to get what feels like bursitis in my hips or IT band issues or you know, I'll start to notice problems with my SI joint. And, and I know that has to do with imbalances, but uh, most people aren't so balanced that they could just squat every day and not start to develop a, a recruitment pattern issue. So that's the one thing I would say, be careful. If you do this, it could be a fast track to developing um, you know, some I, joint problems. I definitely think that. I, I mean, if you're not doing any unilateral work in there, I've experienced oh, yeah. the exact same thing that you just nailed on. And I have definitely been here before where – I'm chasing PRs for squats or I'm really trying to improve that and I'm neglecting Bulgarians or walking lunges or doing some of this unilateral type work and right away the first thing my bursi- I have bursitis in my hips and it's completely gone and doesn't bother me like right now and if I were to start doing that that would be the first thing that would flare up and might let my butt and that's mechanically I'm not and this might not someone who's 22 years old maybe can do that and not f- and feel completely fine being an older guy who's you know, definitely has imbalances, and and I'm not the same spry twenty year old that could probably do anything to his body and still feel fine. You know, for sure, if you're somebody who's older, you know, thirty plus years old, squatting every day, 
could be really challenging if you're because more than likely, okay, if you're 30 years old or older, you've got imbalances. We all have them, you know what I'm saying? And how bad they are, I don't know. And if you're mm. squatting every day, you could be actually exaggerating some of those. So there's a lot to take into consideration with that, which is the love and hate thing. I love it because like you said, Sal, it's like nothing. I mean, you want to grow your legs, like frequency, but that's that, to me, that's the takeaway. It's like, if you're somebody who used to only squat one time a week or rarely, you know, you squatting two times a week, watch what that does for you. Do that for a couple of weeks and then go three times a week and then go four times a week. Like you don't even need to go from zero to a hundred right away. I don't think that doesn't make sense to me. Like I would never go, I'm not squatting every day to squatting every day. I'd go squatting once a week, then twice a week, then three times a week, and like I would build upon that every every week or and two. You definitely know? adding variations to it, and I and I think you'd get important. just as good a result. You also leave yourself open for other days to be doing other work that can complement what you're mm. doing. So that's just my opinion. Yeah, but it's it's funny too because it sounds like something we would hate on, but the reality is, squatting every day, you're probably going to get some good results if you do it right. That's for sure. Next question is from Ben Burdett. How do you catch up a muscle that is a non-symmetrical muscle or muscle group? For example, one bicep smaller than the other or one side of back smaller? Well, this is two things. One, maps black. Two, unilateral work. Mm -hmm. That's the first two things that come to my mm -hmm. mind right away. I mean, that's we created maps black with the intention to... Yeah, the way it's designed is it allows you to choose target, yeah. target specific areas of your body to ramp up volume and, and frequency so that you can you can become more symmetrical. That's why we call it hmm. MAPS Aesthetic. It's good for our stage competitor athletes because these are people who, you know, they, they, they want to look a particular way and part of looking really good on stage and is And even if you're not a competitor, it's incredible yes. for you. If you're just somebody who cares about aesthetics, like if you're, I mean, because I know we have listeners that are all health-minded, that's all they give a shit about, then we have powerlifting type people, and then we have... Definitely aesthetic people, people that want to look better fucking naked. There's nothing wrong with admitting that you want to look better and feel better. And if that's the case, like that Maps Black is designed for that, is designed for people that have specific areas on their body that they think is lagging in comparison to other parts of their body. It teaches you how to literally yeah. plug that in and go. That's the first step. The other thing is when you have like a discrepancy between a left bicep and a right bicep, uh, getting away from doing all the the two 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 armed everything, so unilateral stuff, doing yeah. alternating bicep curls or one arm, and I always start with the weaker side first and you match use that as the gauge. Right? Yes, that is your mm -hmm. gauge. Never the I think the biggest mistake, and I, I we should say this because I know I've seen this a bunch of times with people, is when they're they're stronger on one side, they continue to to lift that way. And you just need it. That that's all. You're way ahead on that side. You need to let the other one catch up. So you always start with the weaker one and do unilateral. Let that be the limiting factor. Yeah, yeah, definitely that from the training side. I would say also don't um, discount the fact that um, you know really look into your daily habits and your routines of what you do all the time or when you go to pick something up. You know what's what do you favor the most in your in the way that you operate and. and um, you know, try try to emphasize uh, one side a little bit more uh, and see what that does for you as far as like just overall adding more volume and, and movement uh, to, to the process. And, and don't just look. So if we're talking about the bicep, too, I, I would also teach someone to not just look at bicep curls. You probably cheat on that dominant side and all your rows, your pull up type movements, any other your back stuff. So well, especially I, if you're doing it right. Yeah, with both so arms. all pulling, so all pulling movements, I'm gonna do unilateral, or mm -hmm. I'm definitely if I'm doing no unilateral, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna start to incorporate that and build upon that because that could be part of the reason why you have an imbalance is you do seated row with both hands, you do lat pull down with both hands, and your dominant side is is pulling most of the weight, and that's going to help develop the bicep more on one side than the other <clears> too. <throat> so not only do you need to do the biceps unilateral, but you also want to do your pulling exercises that incorporate a lot of the bicep uh, unilateral too. Mm -hmm. And same theory, stopping to this, the weaker side just, first. Just work out the, the, the unsymmetrical side more. I mean, really, it, yeah. it, you know, add an extra exercise for that one side, do it more frequently. So if your left arm is visibly smaller than your right arm, on your off days, do some light sets for that left arm that you don't do for the right arm. Just do a little extra work for it and it'll start to catch up. I had, I've had a couple experiences with this myself. Uh, my calves, I had an experience with my calves. When I was younger, I dislocated my kneecap on my left leg. And so for an entire summer, I had to wear this like straight, 
uh, leg brace. So it was like this Velcro leg brace with these bars that went through it. And it kept my le- my left leg totally straight. I could walk on it, but it wouldn't let me bend my knee for obvious reasons because it was swollen or whatever. And so that summer, I had a girlfriend. And I think it was my summer, I want to say summer after eighth grade going into freshman year. So I had this girl that I was dating and I'd wear this straight leg brace and I'd walk to her house, which was a good mile and a half away, maybe two miles away uh, from my house. So I could hang out with her, make out, and you know, do the things that you do when you're you're eight, eight years eight, in heavy eighth grade. petting. Yeah. yeah, you know, and of course at that age, you know, I'm a, a guy. I'm like, what am I? Thirteen years old? Like I'll walk ten miles. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> with fucking both legs broken, just, just with a raging. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that the truth when you're that age, dude? Right? When I think about it, I remember this is in the summertime. It's oh, hot as fuck. Just brought back memories. I've got so, a uh, knee brace. I've got this long ass knee just brace hobbling on, all the way. There. And I walk. I would mm. walk from my house all the way to our house to spend. If her mom was at home for 15 minutes, yeah. to go there for 15 minutes, and then, oh, my mom's coming real quick, and then I'd walk my ass all the way home. But anyhow, because I was doing that almost every single day with this knee brace, I had to push off really hard with my left foot. So I had this kind of funny walk where I would push off on my left foot, but I'd be able to bend my right leg. Well, by the end of that summer, my left calf was a good inch bigger than my right calf. And in order to balance them out, uh, I had to uh, I had to do the same thing on the other side. I had to do lots of calf raises on the other side in order to try and balance them out. So that was one thing. The other thing too is uh, that I've experienced this was with my back because I uh, love deadlifting. I love deadlifting heavy, and I have a, a decent deadlift. I would always uh, and I would always pull with the same over under grip. So my le- right hand supinated, left hand pronated. And when I'd get real heavy, that was my favorable grip. I didn't realize that I had a more developed uh, right side of my back than my left. And it's not super evident, but you can see it if I you know, stand on my shirt off and I'm flexing. You can see that one side's more developed than the other. So I had to deadlift with a switch grip, with the other grip for a while, and now I do double overhand. So it just put in more work for that weaker or smaller side. Um, not necessarily harder work, just put in more work, add more frequency, and the body tends to want to catch up. You, you'll, you'll notice it t- tends to want to catch up. It may take a little, take a while, but it, it'll it'll catch up eventually. Next up is DJ Cruz. Does muscle building inherently cause tightness due to tighter muscles, or is it just from the enlargement of the muscle leading to reduced available range Ooh, of this motion? Is a, this is a good question. This is actually, mm. believe it or not, a controversial yeah, question. Yeah, get, in in get into CNS and get into yeah. what because uh-huh. we don't really have tight muscles, yeah. right? No, but uh, so the you the the old uh, saying was, you know, back in the day in the fifties, forties, and fifties, and maybe even in the 60s, athletes were discouraged from lifting weights. Uh, so if you played football or baseball, or I think football was probably the first sport where athletes started lifting weights, but baseball for sure. Um, well, they didn't sports, want to, you to develop any upper body. No, they actually, yeah. they, they discouraged it. They said, yeah. stay out of the weight room because it'll make you muscle bound. Yep. It'll make you tight and you won't be able to move. And the re- and, and then the, the reverse came out and people said, no, weight training doesn't make you muscle bound. It makes you a better performer. And, mm-hmm. you know, the debate kind of went back and forth. And now it's hard to find a, an athlete that doesn't lift weights. Like weights definitely contribute to performance. Now, you want to think back to yourself and say, well, why would those coaches say that back then? Why would they say people would get muscle bound? They didn't just invent that out of thin air. They, ob- they obviously observed something. And what I think that they observed back then was – that the people that were into lifting weights back then probably weren't into sports. So that now you had this big muscular dude that all he does is lift weights. Then they'd go try well, throw a football or something, to, and it I probably u- looked bad. I used to say it even as a trainer in early years that you know we're we're shortening our muscles because we're just contracting, 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 and so then these the muscles get tighter and tighter and tighter. So I used to present this like I used to say to people because that's how I was under the impression mm-hmm. that. The more we can continue to contract and we lift like that, the shorter and shorter and tighter and tighter we become when well, well, so I it's think, related I th- to CNS stuff. And that's right. I think that can happen. I, I really do. I think uh, the other thing is that you would have athletes lifting weights and not practicing their sport while they're lifting weights. Mm-hmm. And you lose coordination for a couple of different reasons. Your size gets bigger, so you're not moving the same well, body. you're strengthening just those very specified ranges mm-hmm. of motion. That's that, the adaptation you're saying. Yeah, so it's like wherever your joint angle is, uh, as you're working out with the weights is what's going to translate, you know, towards the actual overall mechanical movement. So, 
Uh, there's there's both. You have to, and what Sal's alluding to is like with the skills portion of it, that needs to exist uh, simultaneously with uh, weight training. Or you right. lose it. Or now, you lose if, it. Now, if you take the average person who is totally inactive and you have them lift weights properly, full range of motion, good control, whatever, they're going to get better uh, flexibility. They're going to get better range of motion. Now, if you take somebody who is already got decent range of motion, different, decent flexibility because they're, you know, a, a dancer or whatever, and you have them lift weights and they don't incorporate or integrate more flexibility training, they may notice tighter muscles. Now, here's why. Here's why I think that happens. Because I've had lots of clients comment on that. I've had my girlfriend comment on that. And she's super flexible, right? She used to train uh, you know, w- with silks, which requires a, it's a safety mechanism. It's a safety mechanism that you've t- you've trained your body to do. You've told mm-hmm. it that it's strong within this range of motion. Anything outside of that, it f- it freaks out. I've heard so- somebody call it the overbearing mother. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know, you, no, no, no. Like yeah. you can only go so far. You can hurt yourself. Well, think your body about has that like just internally. Yeah, and think about this way: if your central nervous system is is controlling how much your muscles will extend, which is what it, it does. That's what gives you flexibility. It's your CNS that tells the muscle that it can relax to a certain point or whatever. And that so let's say you have a certain amount of tension at a particular point, and now the muscle's bigger, it's gonna feel like more resistance. It's just a bigger muscle now that's still resisting going past a particular range well, of motion. A, a good example of why this this isn't true is uh Juji Mufu. I mean, John is a great example of you can become extremely muscle bound, you know, or muscular and big and still. But what does he do? He does just as much he has tricking. more range of motion than any of us. Right. Yeah. He does. He does just as much tricking and mobility work as he does heavy lifting. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. and he's and what he did a really good job of always keeping that through this entire. Now, if he would have just lifted weights and he wasn't a tricker and he wasn't in a mobility mm-hmm. and he was that muscle bound, you better believe his range of motion would look worse than anybody sure. in this room. Yeah. So, so I like this. So I'll give you another example. Let's say you have somebody that, uh, just goes to the gym and all they do is work out their chest. So all they do is they lift heavy for chest. They get a you know good pump. They build big pecs. It's Monday every day. And, and let's say that their chest was tight anyway. So they had tight chest to begin with, but they're tight, but their chest was also weak. It was small. Well, now it's just a big, muscular, strong, tight chest. So it's going to cause more distortion in the posture. It is going to feel tighter simply because it's a bigger, stronger muscle that's still tight. Right. So can... You're not getting as expansive in your range of motion. Yeah. So can bigger, can building muscle cause more tightness? It can if you don't go through full ranges of motion and you don't practice flexibility training. Mm -hmm. It definitely can. Now, can you have small, weak muscles that are tight? Yep. You definitely can. Well, this is that's the, more common. The biggest, the <laughs> yeah. biggest knock that I have on bodybuilding, and this is what happened to me, was I became so focused on aesthetics for the first time in my life. I never, my entire career as a trainer, I've always just been a fit trainer. I played basketball, I did plyo work, I did all kinds of multiplanar shit, like just because that was, and and I was trying to build muscle. That's always been a goal. I want to be bigger, more buff, but it wasn't at, at, to a point where. I had to and I and I to sacrifice other things. Well, when I got into competing, that became such the goal that all those other things that were that used to be important to me were no longer because it was all about aesthetics. It was each I needed to improve month over month the way my body looked and training that way, I started to neglect all the things to improve my mobility and movement and I lost it. I mean, I couldn't mm-hmm. I couldn't do a pistol squat. I couldn't I couldn't get all the way down in a full uh, full squat at all. I had lost that range of mo- I looked awesome, but I had lost that, and it's because I had tr- I had sent that signal. Now it had nothing to do with the, the mass, the size of my muscles. Had I been training mobility, now maybe I wouldn't be as big because I would sacrifice some of the aesthetic and hypertrophy type training for more mobility and sports you know training. Would be good to bring on here. Um, I forget his name, but <clears throat> he uh, is part of like the Marinovich's kind of programming as far as they go all speed. It's speed of sport, I guess, is the name of his company and the way he trains a lot of MMA mm-hmm. fighters. Nick Kerson, I think maybe that's his name. I'll have to check. But anyway, like he he was arguing that, um, basically not to, to do traditional types of weight training and, and focus more specifically on that fast twitch, the 
uh, explosive type of uh, plyometric style training only. And so that's something that's interesting to me uh, where it's debatable. It's it's really it all depends on your goals, right? Yeah. Like it, what is more important to you? Is it just becoming bigger and more buff? If that's the case and then and you're willing to sacrifice some of the mobility, then to each their own. But you just know that if you're going to be completely focused on being bigger, building more muscle, that you're going to probably give in some other areas. Or you're okay with maybe not maximizing building the most amount of muscle because you're also wanting to have balance and mobility, and so you incorporate that. But I could definitely see the argument for somebody to do just straight you know, tra- if you're an athlete, like right. that's different, right? If you're an athlete but and, and you want to build some muscle. There's an off season for a reason. And, and and you're actually able to produce more force the stronger you get. Right. Course. But even in an off season, you're still training movements that are going to complement your yeah, sport. Exactly. Yeah. yeah you're, you're still, still putting the skill. Yeah. You're still putting the skill based training in there. You're yeah. still working on mobility. You're right. just more focused. You, you don't have game days. So instead of game days now, your game day right. is now in the gym lifting, right? And well, building it's just muscle. always my problem is always like a method or a system that revolves around one thing, mm-hmm. you know, that, that just to me doesn't have a lot of uh, longevity well, or life to it. How about this too? I and mean, we didn't even touch on this with this conversation. Is there's a huge genetic factor that plays into here too? Of course, yeah. there are some yeah. people that have just. What am I already working with right now? Yeah. Right, and I and I use uh, Juji as an example. He's probably also an example of somebody who's a genetic freak. Also, you know, what I'm saying the guy responds very well to lifting weights, and he's been been able to do the splits forever. So. You know, he's he's definitely got a genetic advantage that he's continued to work towards and work at, which is a good example of why he looks that way. Some people are get, are going to be able to lift tons of weight. Uh, another person was in the with this. Remember, what's his face who passed away? Uh, Rich Piana. You know, super flexible, super flexible, hmm. you know, and you and I never see him doing mobility work. He hmm. just genetically was, you know, gifted when it comes to mobility. So there is a major Tom Platts. Tom Platts was another guy. But he he also did work on it. He worked on it quite a bit. Here's the thing. Look, I tell you what. If you're the average person and you're lifting weights properly and you're doing the barbell lifts, like the good ones, like full barbell squats and their variations, you know, full rows and pull-ups and overhead presses and, you know, windmills and stuff like that, you're, you're, not, gonna have, you're not even going to have to worry about tight muscles. You're actually going to improve your flexibility and range of motion. The average person can't even do a full squat properly because they're either too weak or too tight or both. Right. So, you know, definitely don't be afraid of becoming tighter if you start doing resistance training. The only people that should worry about getting tighter with resistance training are people who are already super flexible and then they stop their flexibility training and just do resistance training. Right. But the average person, you're not going to get tighter. If anything, you're going to get greater ranges of motion, greater flexibility, that's a good, that's a greater point. mobility. That's a good point. Absolutely. So check this out. Go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. We post new videos all the time. Some of them are exercise demos. Some of them include special guests. And some of them are even funny. You got to watch Justin's video that we posted today. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.